Hey guys, Kirk Asher here. For the past couple of days, I've been messing around with these creative spaces in PS2 Nintendo Genesis. They've actually been quite fun. Uh, there's a lot of different systems and mechanics that they have on day one with this thing. Uh, but today I wanted to showcase what you can do with the connect or link system inside. Uh, what I mean by that is the stuff that you can do with different build parts connected to others to have different effects or functions happen that can be quite crazy. So I have a whole bunch of these different things lined up in a row, and these are mainly for what you want to implement into mini games, puzzles, etc., to make them like function better or I don't know, make them possible. So uh, a lot of these come from like computer science or math, so it might go a little bit over your head, but hopefully I can explain it in a way that it makes sense. Before we get into each of these individual sections, though, I actually want to give some sort of foundation or basics with the connect system. So we'll just do something simple here with one part interacting with another. So we're just going to the edit menu here and choose a foot switch or a button. We'll just place that on the ground. Uh, so right now, this doesn't really do anything with anything else. I mean, you can press it and make a little glowy, but that's about it. So we're actually going to put another part down. Let's just use this text display cube. So with that on the ground now, uh, it still won't do anything. So, I mean, press that, nothing happens. So we still need to connect the two using uh, the connect system. So we'll actually go to the settings here and then click on the individual part. So this is the build part settings for the foot switch here. And it has a whole bunch available. So on the top here is like settings for like showing the build part or hiding it. The build uh, collision detection. So you can like go through it if you turn it off. And then the send receive connections. So this allows connections in and out, or, you know, just can't do anything with the connect system. We'll leave that on for now. Uh, so for the things down here, this top section, the connect send conditions, is what this thing will send out when you do certain interactions. So with the switch on function here, if I set that to on, then this will now send out to the one ID to everything else that has a one where it receives it, um when i press on that button and i can do the same with like the switch off so like when i hop off the button it can send like a two out for whatever reason um but then with the operation after receiving connect this is like when things go into uh the individual parts so like it can show hide uh the parts the coll collision detection all the stuff with the basics and even more with like some other parts but now let's actually look at the text display cube and try to connect the IDs that I put with the switch on, switch off. So in here, we have this text display playback. We'll actually just leave it on uh, the goal here. And then uh, down below, you can see there's play text display and then also play text display here. So keep in mind uh, of the certain categories that they're under. So the connect send condition is where it sends out an ID so like when the text display is played it sends it out to other things out there so what we want is actually the one down here where it receives that connection to then play the text display so we'll actually put that uh, on and leave it on the one so when I turn on the switch um, it plays that goal on screen so we'll just jump on there and so goal and there it is and it's actually that easy and now let's actually use that two id when you get off of that switch so i should go back to the cube here and then i guess we will uh, have it disable the collision detection when it goes on a two so when i get off the button so what that means is like going through as i said earlier with the build parts right now i can't uh, physically go through it but then when i press the button it says goal and then i get off of it i can now go through the said button but then i could also if i wanted to have it be on the same id as like another thing so i guess let's see we'll actually show this in a different way so like a sound for instance i go into this have it play a sound effect on the one we'll have it be correct so both should happen when I press on this button. So now I can hear both the sound and the goal at the same time because of that one ID being sent out to both at the same time. 
So now hopefully you guys can imagine what you can do with a system like this and just how crazy that it can be. But now let's kind of clean up these parts here so they don't mess with everything else around. And let's get into all these different things that I have set up that you might want to use. So first off, we have a or statement set up. So basically, if you interact with one thing or another, it will cause uh, an individual thing to occur. And then those can branch off into other things if you wanted to, but it doesn't need to happen. So we'll activate this setup. This is just like a kill switch so it doesn't interact with everything else that's going on. So basically, if I press this button, this data pod should activate, or if I press this switch, it will also activate the middle. Um, but each of those will also activate their individual ones on the sides. So the button shows the one and then the one or two in the middle. Now if I do this switch, I'll activate that data pod, but also the one in the center. So let's take a look at the functions here on how this works. So go to edit mode and look at the settings. So this switch basically just has this and the one ID, the switch on. So whenever I press the button, it sends that out. Uh, there is other stuff on the bottom, but this is just part of the kill switch, so it doesn't do uh, those connections. Uh, but it sends the one to the data pod, and it just displays uh, the message that I have set up. But for this cube, this combo cube, this takes two inputs. And once it gets those two inputs, it sends out its own ID. But the way that I have it set up is it takes... Uh, the one and puts it into both of those slots so then it's full and it sends out a three so that three goes into this middle pod here and shows that message so for the access switch though it's kind of a little bit different it just has two for the switch on and the switch off since it's a little bit different interactions but basically if i interact with it in any way it sends that out and that sends that to this data pod to show the message but also into this cube just the same way with the ones with the other so it takes both, uh, it takes it into both of the sections here, and then it uh, sends out a three, just the same as this other cube, to do this middle interaction whenever I do either of those. So this can be very useful if you want a certain thing to happen with both objects, but not everything connected. So like a certain unique thing on the side here, like these data pods, or just something else that you want to do. And now let's move on to the next thing. Uh, let me just kill this here, and then activate this one. So this is the AND statement. So basically it requires both of the objects to be interacted with to then like open this door or close it. So uh, to test this out here, I'll press this button and then, you know, nothing is happening. You know, I just keep pressing it, uh, it does nothing. But then if I press this other button, finally, it opens the door. But now once it does that once, I have to press both buttons again. So if I press this, nothing. But then if I press this one finally again, it closes the door and that just kind of like goes back and forth between the two let's kind of take a look at how this is set up so this is kind of similar with like the combo cube setup but uh, yeah this is a switch on for the one id this one is the two id and that both goes uh into this cube the ids are just set up with the one on the id one here and then on the id two it has that two going in so once it gets both of those it uh, sends out this three, but to make it an and statement as well, uh, the three is also being sent into itself with this reset received content. So what that means, it clears this cache because it kind of like saves those numbers. Um, but basically like because of that, it allows this door to open once both buttons are pressed. Um, and this, this part is like the sending out, but on the bottom here, it has that three ID. So whenever the three is, uh, done it does what uh, it currently isn't doing so it opens or it closes so this setup is good for when you want the player to interact with multiple things and they have to interact with like all of them at least once um but let's sh shut this one off uh so for how the combo cube usually works though um if i don't do that thing that i showed on the bottom with this one where it resets itself it's actually uh, a little bit different so it's a and and then it turns into an or statement so what i mean by that is that i'll uh press this here you now it shows the one sign it hasn't opened yet i'll press that yeah so it opened so i have to do that both button press and then it finally opens the door but now from now on if i just press any button it'll just open and close the door so once the condition is met with both of them I now just need to press one button, not all of them. So taking a look at the difference here, 
it's actually uh not too much because yeah this shows the same uh switch on with the one switch on with the two but uh yeah it sends out the three once it gets both of the numbers it just um doesn't have that reset happen automatically with itself uh this little button here does that if i want to reset it uh it's cache but uh yeah basically it's all functionally the same except for that reset on this one cube so i don't know where you'd want to use this one i guess like i said if you just want the player to at first do both but later only need one of them uh it's probably like some niche scenarios with like some mini games or something like that moving on to the next one though it gets a little bit complicated so this is one where i've been trying to make all must be true like all these switches must be on at once and not turned off to then have a like sky lift uh appear so you can use it but currently because of how ngs works with its like countdown count up like blocks here and uh like the ngs tick rate it doesn't uh quite work because these get out of sync and it like messes it all up i'll, I'll just kind of like show the example but i probably won't go into too in depth with this since it doesn't quite work as of now uh but yeah this starts the count does it show zero so it should stay zero and this is like kind of like minusing it at the same time but yeah as you can see like kind of is out of sync to where it can still increase by itself but the way that i'm like currently having set up is that these are supposed to increase the time as you can see there it kind of bumps it up way more to kind of like have it be at three and then those appear and then like if i have any of them off it minuses the time but yeah because of these being out of sync it doesn't quite work the way that i want it to yeah let's just kill all this there's kind of a alternative to this but it isn't quite the same where all must be true but turning off resets the whole thing so to explain this one let's activate it here so if i you know turn off any of these after i've turned some on then it resets everything else but essentially it works uh the same where you need to turn on all of these and get this count of block to three to then activate the sky lift so you can go up in the air but uh basically just the downside of this system is like you can't just willy-nilly turn on and off like i wanted to with this one so if any of your players turn off any of these switches, the whole system gets cut and they have to start all over again. Um, you can have it to where they can't re-access the switch after the fact if you want to. So like this example right here, where I press that and then now I can't interact with it unless some outside source does like this button where it turns it off. So you can kind of have it that way where it links up with the count cube and that skylight. But now it's kind of look at the functions of how this all works. So with these switches, they send a switch on on the 101 and a 102 on the switch off. So the 101 uh, goes to the count up cube and increases the count by one. And it kind of shows the current count as well. So I kind of like know what's going on. And then once it gets to three or like the number of switches there, it sends out a one to uh, the sky lift, which shows the parts and also enables the collision so you can lift up. But if that 102 gets sent out, it hides this if it, you know, isn't hidden uh, already and also disables the collision. But then it also resets the count on this back down to zero, as well as turns off all the switches uh, on the bottom here. I feel like this would be great for players to unlock some major thing on your map or maybe like some sort of hide and seek activity to unlock a door, a skylift to get to a new area, just something along those lines. But I would definitely have it to this variant over here where it like disables its access detection automatically uh, to set that up. Is when you have the switch on, it sends that ID to itself or just disables that access detection. And if you just want to reset the map as a whole, there should be some sort of like other outside source like this button here, or when you switch it on, it re-enables um, the switch, but also turns the switches off. Going on to the next thing, we have a randomizer here. So whenever I press that button, it hides one of these. I also have it set up to where it's supposed to show one of these as well. But as we see here, it isn't going to do that. But I'll keep pressing this button. It'll like hide some of them at random. There, it just chose one of the ones that's already hidden. I gotta keep pressing. There's a purple one gone. 
this one of the three that we've already gone. And keep pressing this over and over again until they slowly start disappearing. Yeah, let's actually look at the settings here. So for these, uh, they basically just get an ID to where they hide themselves. I did put it to where the show is on the same one. So you think like with the door from uh, earlier that it would just kind of like switch on and off if it gets selected. But unfortunately for this one, at least with the hide and show, it only does the hiding. It doesn't do the show. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it does like a show first and then it hides right afterwards. Uh, it's just like weird because you would think it would work the same with the open and close system. But uh, in this random block cube, it sends out 999, 998, 997, 996, and 995. And each of those kind of line up with these. So it hides on the 998 there for that one, 997, and so on and so forth. But how it randomly chooses all these is um, basically it sent a signal, which is from this button here. This button just sends a one out to this cube. And then it just at random chooses these five options. Uh, you're limited to the five options, but you can do less than that if you want to, or you can just actually have more cubes and like combo it uh, with that combo cube from earlier. Uh, so you can have like more randomization with it if you want to. Yeah, there are a ton of uses for randomization in this game that I couldn't even really, you know, say all of them. But yeah, you can do stuff like this, open and close doors at random, just whatever that you would come up with for games or just like even some visuals. Uh, but I guess just to show here, uh, something that you could do for this, like, uh, showing thing. We'll just do, like, another uh, number here. I believe this is 994 on this one, yeah. So this button is kind of set up to reshow everything again. That got uh, disappeared since this random block doesn't uh, seem to work when sending that same signal there. So we'll do that. And then we'll just hit this button. The word just shows them all again, and then you can continue with the random little disappearing color game <laughs> yeah going on to the next room over this is where randomization kind of works when using that uh same number with the doors here so hitting that to turn it on i can hit this here to where it just chooses a door at random to open or close based on what it is already For some reason there it seemed to choose all three in a row but that's not usually the case for some reason, it just chose th three in a row again. Come on, do a little bit more random than that. There we go. See, it went back to that one. Yeah, this is some essentially the same as the one uh, room over where this button sends out a one to this cube to then choose one of these three options, 999, 998, 997, to go to these doors. Just that these doors actually can do both of the options. It just chooses one or the other based on its current condition. Um, but also what I have set up here is a looping timer, which can do the randomness automatically uh, every three seconds. So I just got to press this button to activate it. And this uh, timer goes to this cube to then go to the doors. So I don't need to press any buttons anymore. It just kind of does that automatically. So how this works, this button is uh, sending a signal to this cube to kind of start. And then essentially uh, every three seconds it kind of resets itself so it does that by uh, starting at three going down to zero and it sends out a signal to the one id once it does so which sends a thing to that random block cube but also sends it to itself where it resets that timer down below just keep in mind with these things you do have to be careful with them because if you don't stop the countdown they'll just keep going on forever so you definitely want to kill switch for them and if you have too many things happening all at the same time, the game will just force shut these things down by just automatically sending uh, or killing the send receive option right here. So it just no longer does it anymore. To show an example of that happening, I'll have uh, this go down to one second so it calls the function way more times than before. And then I'll also be hitting this random cube here. So just kind of just showing that eventually it'll kill the different interactions because it's just like too much too much is going on it kind of takes a second it's actually kind of a lot of calls at once yeah there it is excessive number of connect transmissions so it just kills the items that are currently uh activated 
Now, as you can see in these items, they can still send and receive connections. Yeah, just like they're not doing anything anymore, or at least some of them aren't. But if you just like press something else to kind of start it back up, it'll just keep going as like if nothing even happens. But just be aware that that kind of exists to where it could just stop everything, even if they are still kind of receiving or sending signals. But that is everything with this one here. So let's uh, deactivate it. Hopefully this can be useful in many things, not just the randomizer, but the actual timer in the background as well. But uh, we have this last thing here. Where this is a X or statement. So what that means, for those who don't know, means one of the things can happen, but not the other or not both. I'll just take a look at how it works, though. So if I press this button as many times as I want, I'll just keep opening and closing the door. But if I press the other button, it'll do it once. But now I can't do anything with either button. It just kills it. And it's toast. So then if I reactivate the system again, so I can just press the one button by times I want. And then I go to the other one at all. So does it like the one time. And then now the whole system is dead. <laughs> so just to take a look at this, it's a pretty simple thing again, just this button sends out a 1, the other one sends out a 2, and they go into these cubes here. So double 1 there, so anytime that button gets pressed, this sends out a 3, and when this button gets pressed, it gets put into there for 2, and that sends out a 3, so either can open that door. So pretty much similar to that OR statement at the beginning of the video. But there's an extra little thing in the corner here. So this is what makes it an XOR statement. So when this receives both of those signals, kind of like in that AND statement, then it sends out a signal that kills everything. So then you can no longer do anything with the door. It's just done. It's toast. But um, the reason why it uh, still opens one time uh, when you kill the system is because of how the function system works. So if I had these numbered differently, where like the kill switch was like at a one or something, and like this was at 900 or whatever interaction with the door was at 900, uh, then it wouldn't open. So if you want it to not happen on the other button press, you can, you just need to order the functions differently. To show what I mean in like a clearer picture, I have like this other little setup uh, on the side here. Where this is like a 2, this is a 3 for um, these cubes here. And then this button sends out a 1 to both of the cubes, so it does both of them. So I press that, the 2 happens first, and then the 3 happens. So it's just like ordering of the functions, they just go down the list based off when they are activated. I could even um, like move these two around to like different positions on the map. So like this one goes back over here and this one over here and it would still do the same. So the two would get activated first and then the three doesn't matter where they're at. That's everything that I have for you guys today, though. Hopefully it all helps and wasn't too hard to understand. Uh, I guess just like one final thing here I wanted to show off. Uh, this is my main creative space. Uh, I've been working on a lot of different things here. Uh, definitely on games, though. I got a fully functioning tic-tac-toe board, a red light, green light prototype from, like, Squid Game or just that children's game, and even a heads or tails house over there. But there's just, like, so many different things that you guys can do. I've seen some fantastic things already on Twitter and elsewhere, and I'm definitely looking forward to more. I'll see you guys in the next NGS video, though. Peace.